All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is December 7th, 2017, and I still do have this cold. Uh, I was feeling a little bit better at about this time yesterday. Uh, not feeling quite as good as I was yesterday, but I, I just can't stop. Uh, I've got to put out these videos. And in fact, I might even do another one later this evening instead of waiting till tomorrow, but we'll see how I feel. Um, because this one that I'm going to show that we're going to go through today is about the, the horses in, uh, of the seals. I'm going to show you who they are. It is extremely exciting. And I've got possibly the most exciting news even tomorrow or in the next video. <coughs> Excuse me. The next video, um, I'm gonna go. I, I might touch on it today, but I mean in this video. But I, I probably won't, except to say that uh, this whole thing with Hanukkah is dead serious. Uh, this this season of Hanukkah coming up here from the 12th to the 20th, uh, and I'm going to reveal it to you. But it would have to be at the end of this video or in another video, like I said, because it's going to relate to one of these horses and you're going to completely understand. You know, for, well, for two months, at least now, two to three months, I've been telling you guys that there are three different groups. There's the escape group that Luke talks about, right? And I know you, you guys that follow me, uh, you know, you might get sick of seeing it, but guys, it is so important because there's people... There are people out there that don't understand. And what I want to show, so this, if you go into the Olivet Discourse, guys, especially for new people, you go into the Olivet Discourse of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that's where everything got revealed to me uh, just about a year, uh, sorry, not a year, three months ago. September 8th, a, a light bulb went off. The Spirit showed me something in Mark that I, I was trying to figure something out that was in Matthew and Luke. And once I saw Mark, then everything opened up excuse me, in relations to um, understanding how end time scriptures are are being applied and spoken about in different scriptures. For example, the discourse of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it's, there, there's a reason why it's spoken of differently in all three. <coughs> excuse me, and it's because it's speaking to three groups of people. And I could show you this kind of stuff all day long. Uh, here, let me show you another example. Watch this. And then we'll go into Luke. I think I did this on the last video, right? Thomas is to the church. Philip, or sorry, sorry, sorry. Thomas is to the escaped group, the church of Philadelphia, the bride. Philip is asking the question, but he's coming from a church angle. He's the churches, the repentant churches that are going to go through the seals. And then we have Judah down here, who of course is for Judah. And Judah, and then through his question and things that are there, you realize that it's speaking to Judah. And it's it's all it's it's in threes. It's the three different groups that are being addressed. And watch this. This is Mark when I when I went and realized something in Mark, that's where it began. And then when I went and dug deeper into all three discourses, it opened up more, and then I realized. Oh my goodness. My my biggest things, there was three. It was, I believe it was three. Who is being spoken to? We were never addressed in that. People don't get, and I didn't either, I was guilty of it, that we need to understand who is being spoken to in these scriptures. Prior to, to being revealed to me, I had no idea. I don't know anybody that was teaching it. But I can tell you who is being spoken to in the scriptures. You know, and I've got to do videos on 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Timothy 1 and 2. And the reason is because this is for the church during the tribulation of the, of the uh, seals. This is Judah's tribulation. Church, right? Is, uh, Israel. And again, Judah. And that's who First and Second row was addressing. And I'm going to give you even more evidence of that today in what I'm going to talk to you about in the seals. But I'm going to, the seals in what I'm talking about right now still tie in together because we have Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And 
the understanding of who is being spoken to is critical. All right. Luke at the end of his discourse is different than the other two. He it's Jesus here and it says, watch ye therefore. So it builds up. All right. They go in and it the other two uh, talk about no one knows of the day or hour. Well, Luke's doesn't do that. <coughs> Luke's goes in and says, take heed to yourselves. as at any time your hearts be overcharged. All right. For as a snare, these things will come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape. This is, this is big time, guys. This is what we could be looking at here at Hanukkah. And when you see these scriptures that I'm going to show you in the, in the next video, maybe touch on at the end of this one, it's going to blow your mind uh, to let you know the season we're at right now. Um, so see, to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. See, guys, what you need to understand is this is not the rapture. This is not a rapture. This is the word escape. See that? It's not rapture. Excuse me. Watch a, a previous video. And, you know, there's some comments that I still need to get to from the last video. And uh, I will be getting to them. But I also wanted to say to people, please watch some of my previous videos. <coughs> excuse me. Watch my last. And, and I know, excuse me. I realize they're uh, an hour, give or take. But, you know, the last five or six videos. They're worth watching to get an understanding if you have a question, right? Uh, I don't mind answering questions, but obviously, you know, when you get the same ones repeated, repeated because there's new people, I understand that. Um, but at the same time, I do ask that you please go watch other videos. This information that I'm giving you guys, this, this revealing that I'm giving you, it doesn't come from me. I can guarantee you, all right? It's coming from the Holy Spirit. And what I reveal in these videos is, is unbelievable. It's just, it's crazy. And it's not just me saying it. It happens almost on a daily basis, which is why I've got to do these videos regardless. Because I know who these videos are for, for the most part. And what their purpose is. And I've got to do them whether they're sick or not. And the reason is because the time is short. Very short. First thing that's coming is what's called the escape. And it's the group Luke addresses. Luke is addressing the escaped church that's going to get taken out before anything begins. The bride, Philadelphia. How do we know? Look at this. To escape all these things that shall come to pass. Okay, well, now watch this. For some of you newbies to the channel, watch this. Watch how Luke talks. Right? Everybody is going to first have to deal with this. Wars and rumors of wars, wars and commotions, but the end is not yet, right? So now watch this. Look at this right here. Look at this. Then said he unto them, why is this in black letters? Because it's Luke jumping in and inserting that what's being said here isn't addressed to him. <coughs> Meaning it's not addressed to his group. He's telling his group, the escape group, that, hey, guys, if you want to escape, you want to be accounted worthy, look, this isn't to them. Or sorry, this isn't to, to my group, the escape group. And if for those who are watching and those who are reading my information, Luke's saying, here, there's things you need to do to be accounted worthy, right? You need to be in the scriptures. You need to be, you know, digging for a thing, being a king, being a queen, right? The Lord hides things in the scriptures conceals them and it's for kings to search a thing out right we are kings get that we're kings and queens we're searching a matter out we're going for the understanding and that's all part of it you know giving your life to christ of course number one believing on him as your lord and savior you know repenting of your sins turning away from them and being diligent searching your scriptures daily spending some time with them in prayer 
Those are things that are that make you accounted worthy. And for those who are accounted worthy, and Luke is now talking directly to you guys, he says, then said he unto them. Then said who? Who's he? Jesus. Jesus said unto who? Math, Mark and Matthew. Luke's telling you when he heard Jesus talking to Matthew and Mark. <coughs> Not his group. Please watch other videos on this. All right, I break this down. And I'm going to show you the evidence of that. See, and then it goes on and on and on. It talks about it. There are things that are similar from Matthew and Mark. And what he does is he puts them together. He combines what Mark says and what Matthew says in their discourses and puts them together, letting his group see what these people are going to go through. And he breaks it down and gives them a little bit more understanding as to when things can end for them, the timing, and when things would come to end more so for, for Judah. All right? Now, look at here. Learn the lesson from the fig tree. Well, look at this again. Here we go. Black letter words. Luke jumps in again and says, and he spoke to them a parable. So again, Jesus spoke to Mark's group and Matthew's group and spoke to them a parable. You go into Matthew's discourse and you go to Mark's discourse, and it's not when they now shoot forth. See, this was a big thing. Not only who was being spoken to, but catching these little word changes. I did an hour-long video on, on the S. It's a little S on the end of a word for servants in Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, I think it was. Right? Excuse me, I think it was 1. Yeah, I believe it was 1.1 1, 1 or 1.2. 1, it's, you know, these little differences, these little subtle changes. But what do people do when it comes to the Gospels? They tend to just go to, to, they tend to, go to Matthew. And they think because it's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and sometimes in John, that, whoops, that, um, that's fine with me. I, I just need to go to one of them. No. It's speaking to different people. And Luke is talking to his group right before the end days. And he says, when they now shoot forth, and this is going to touch on something today. You're going to see this. Well, look at Mark's group and Matthew's group. Do you see any jumping in? Watch this. See, boom, right here. So right before this in Luke, right here, there was a part where Luke jumps in and, and he said unto them. Jesus said unto them. You don't have that here. It is all Jesus' words. All black, uh, sorry, all red letter, red letter, red letter, red letter, the whole way through. See, even at the parable of the fig tree. Now learn the parable of the fig tree. Who learn it? Mark, your group. You guys learn this parable and understand it. See, there's no jumping in in black letters saying it's speaking to another group. It's being addressed to Mark's group. And look what it says. Her branch. What do you mean when the fig tree, when her branch is yet, is yet tender, <coughs> excuse me, and putteth forth leaves? You're like, what? Luke's said they, when their branch is ready. Well, now let's have a look at Matthew. This is just to give you guys an understanding of this because it's going to be important. Watch this. For nation shall rise against, see, no black letter saying addressed to somebody else. It's to them. All red letter the whole way through. All red letter. Look at the fig tree. Do you see anything like Luke's again? Nope, because it's directly addressed to Matthew's group. And look at this. See that subtle change? When his branch is yet tender, because of who it is speaking to. All right? Now, I've been trying to, <coughs> excuse me, reveal to people. And to be honest with you, I, I was jumping back and forth because I was a little bit torn myself with uh, the white horse. But now here's the thing. I really didn't spend time in the red horse, black horse, pale horse. You know, for those who are going to escape, we're going to be, we'll be gone. All right? And I'm going to show you. I've been telling you the next thing to happen before any bomb drops or anything else, there is going to be an escape. There is going to be an escape that happens, which is the Church of Philadelphia. Not the church is. The Church of Philadelphia is the bride. She is the pillar. Right? I was listening to a, a video yesterday from Pastor Sandy, and he was talking about Samson when he wants to break down those pillars so that he can kill those people in the stadium 
and he killed like 3,000 people in the stadium because that was his wish. He, gave, he told the Lord, you know, I'll, let me just do this one thing. And he breaks the pillars, right? And Pastor Sandy was correct. When those pillars are removed in the Samson story, when those pillars are removed, everything collapses and, and now people are dying. See what I'm saying? I'm going to reveal that to you in the seals. It's amazing. And you look at that. When the pillars are removed, everything collapses, right? Not when the pillars are, are just broken. That's just the, the symbology there. But when they've been removed, the stadium or the building collapses. Why? Because they're the foundation, right? They're the pillars that held it up. They were the foundation, the support, right? Well, guys, I don't, I don't know if we're paying attention or not, but you do realize that that's not all the churches. You know that? That's not the description for all the churches. Which church is a pillar? It's the Church of Philadelphia, guys. The base, the support, a pillar. Samson wanted to destroy or broke down those pillars. And it came crashing down once the pillars were removed. Get it? Only one church is called Pillars. Only two churches are told that they wouldn't have to repent. Because they're both gone. Philadelphia is gone. And the other one is Smyrna. Now, how can it be that Smyrna won't be here for the most part? Because they're the ones dying. They're the ones that are going to be imprisoned. They're going to be the martyrs for Christ. And we don't know, right? Just like we pray and, and pray and pray and watch to be account and pray to be accounted worthy to escape all these things, to be part of the bride and the escape group. <coughs> Excuse me. But we don't know for sure. Just like, could you imagine knowing that you were in the church of Smyrna? By the way, churches, there are people in different, I mean, there's people in, from the church of Philadelphia that are in the Catholic church, that are in all these different churches, the pro, different Protestant churches, Baptist churches. That's not what defines it. All right? It is not what defines it. What defines it are the seven churches. It's not the churches that we have here on earth. The, the churches as defined by God. Could you imagine if you knew where you were from the church of Smyrna? That would suck. You know, your reward is fantastic because you're a martyr for the Lord. But having to go through that would suck. All right? Pray for these guys. You know, whoever these people are in the church of Smyrna, God bless them, God love them, God strengthen them and be with them always and forever because this is going to be tough. It's not only going to be tough for them, obviously. It's going to be tough for everybody during tribulation. Let's not kid ourselves. But Smyrna, they're, they're going to take a beating. All right? So it's, it's good to not know right away which church you are. But if you're about to get beheaded, God bless you guys, you know that you're the church of Smyrna and you're going to be brought back from the dead to reign, rule and reign with Jesus Christ during the thousand year millennium. It's exciting, guys. I showed that in another video. All right. But now let's go back. So I just showed you that the church of Philadelphia is the only one that's the foundation and the pillar. And you know, this again, it goes back to what I want to talk to you about uh, in the next video, which shows the time could be literally at hand. Like, you know, we could be a week or two, less than a week to about two weeks away from the escape taking place. Now, for those of us that get to go, um, we won't know. The next thing we'll know is what? Well, here's the next thing we get to know. We'll, the next thing we'll see. It's the next thing we'll see. To escape all these things that shall come to pass, right? So why is there an escape? Because it's for the alive. But there's going to be dead people as well that are going to be resurrected. But the, it's called the escape, to escape, because there's still people that are alive, all right? And to stand before the Son of Man. So as soon as we're taken out, we're standing before the Son of Man. You guys all know one of my favorites, Second Corinthians, Paul's talking. Where does this group go? It's not a rapture, but it's like a rapture. And we go to the third heaven. 
want to go a step further? I, I can build on this evidence for you all day long. Watch this. There shall be some standing here that shall not taste the death. death. And remember, we're in Luke. Luke is talking to his bride. All right? He's talking to his bride. When you find things repeated three times in the three different uh, Gospels, that means they're speaking to each one individually. They're speaking to their own groups. And they all have this one. But they speak it slightly differently. And there's a reason. And look at Luke's group. That shall not taste death. Some stand here that shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Stand before the Son of Man in the third heaven. See that? <coughs> Excuse me. They're all the same thing. They're all in the same place. So when the escape happens, guys, boom. We're going to be in the throne room. We're going to be standing in heaven before the Son of Man, before Jesus Christ himself, in the third heaven. So we're not going to understand what these other people are about to go through. But when that happens, it's, it, it's the beginning of the end. The, the end times will have begun. And I'm going to show that to you now in these seals. I almost wanted to save the white horse because... When you understand who the white horse is, guys, you're going to be floored. You know, I've had pastors tell me uh, since the beginning, and even recently, I had a pastor explain to me why the white horse uh, was the Antichrist. And I'm sure just about every one of you have been taught that as well. <coughs> Excuse me, if not all of you listening have been taught that. I'm going to show you the evidence that the white horse is not the Antichrist. All right, I'm going to give you absolute evidence that will prove to you that the white horse is not the Antichrist. All right, and who the red one is. The black one was a lot more difficult, but, <coughs> excuse me, the black one was a lot more difficult, but I've got part of it. And then I've got the pale one as to who it's addressing. All right, now let's go into it. What do we know about who the, who the uh, escape group is? We know it's Philadelphia, right? And if you followed me and if you go through my videos and you were just paying attention to what I was saying, you know that it's Luke. Luke is the person who is addressing the escape group. He's talking to his escape group. My group can get out of all these things before it begins. Before what? <coughs> Excuse me before nation rises against nation and kingdom against kingdom, before war breaks out, which means what? When do we see war break out in Revelation? Sorry, give me a second here. I'm going to just pause for a second. There, that's better. All right, so uh, give me a second. Go back to this one. So we know that Luke is talking to the white to the sorry luke is speaking to the church the the philadelphia church the bride that escapes okay you can go through my videos you're going to see all these things and if that means they're going to go before like i was just saying if they're going to go before all these things come to pass that means they're going to have to go before the nations rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom right that it means because right here he jumps in and he says, this is Jesus talking to these two groups, not to my group. But what does he say before it? That we're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars and commotions, but the end isn't yet. And then boom. Next thing, his own words, this doesn't apply to my group. All right? So what's going to happen is there's going to be the escape group, the Church of Philadelphia, the bride is going to get taken out first, then war begins. All right? And then during that war, you're going to have your famines, earthquakes, the pestilence. You're going to have all these different things. And see, like I said, Luke combines them both because they don't have pestilence and famines both if you go into Mark and Matthew's discourses. All right? So Luke explains both of theirs in a slightly different way because he's combining them. Now let's go into Revelation. Let's see how that applies. All right? And I saw and behold a white horse. And him that, uh, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. 
I spoke about this before, and this is why I was confused. And like I said, a recent pastor was giving me these reasons why the white one was the was the Antichrist. And the real only reason people believe it, that the white horse is the Antichrist is because they say, well, Satan wants to, Satan's just trying to copy everything the Lord's doing. He's mimicking everything. So he's going to be the one on the white horse. It's not true. And when I show you the evidence, if you've been following me for any amount of time, it's going to blow your mind. It, you don't even have to search it out. It's right in front of your face. All right. So the other thing is, my brother Mark was telling me, <clears throat> my brother in Christ, Mark, was telling me that when he was growing up, his mom had always told him that the arrows also have a representation, <coughs> excuse me, that mean children. And I never heard that before. And it makes sense. But I did a little bit. I spent a few minutes looking into it so far, and, and I haven't come across uh, the anywhere I could find understanding that it means uh, children. But I'm sure with some more digging, I could find stuff. But I haven't yet. Right? But if you look at this and you say, well, he's coming with a bow, but no arrows. And he was telling me that when he grew up, his mom was telling him that arrows mean children. So he's coming with a bow and what? No arrows because he's coming to get his arrows. See that? It makes sense. I haven't been able to back it with any other scripture yet, but it makes sense. And a crown. What kind of crown? A Stephanos. Not a big gold fancy looking crown, a wreath crown. All right? This isn't Satan mimicking Jesus Christ. At no point, right? You'll have pastors that teach, they teach, well, uh, what is it? Uh, something of first mention, right? So if it was mentioned first over here, then that's most likely what it means here. So this, I don't know where they got that doctrine of, you know, first mention, but it's their doctrine. And when you get to this horse, they say, oh, no, that doesn't mean that anymore. Well, then stop with this, this doctrine of first mention stuff all the time. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's just see what the scriptures say. All right. And went forth conquering and to conquer. This means victory. This means overcoming, prevailing to get victory. This isn't killing a bunch of people here. This is prevailing in victory. Now you want to see the kicker? People go through this kind of stuff all the time. And there's never been anything really clear going through the bows, but there's no arrows, what kind of crown it is, and what does this conquering to conquer means? mean? Well, get ready. It's been right here the whole time. You ready? When I showed this to my uh, brother in Christ, Mark, he freaked because he, he's been following me. He, he, he knows what's been revealed to me. He knows the key that I have. He gets it. He sees it every day. We talk almost every day. And when I showed him this, because we had had a conversation, uh, like I said, I think the other video, yesterday we were talking for almost three and a half hours over two phone calls uh, the day before yesterday. And he told me, he says, hey, or actually it might have been yesterday. Might have been yesterday. Or the day before. Anyways. Oh, the day before. So uh, we were talking about the pale horse and he's like, you know, there's some meaning and you know, I think this horse means this and this horse means this. I'm like, well, I got to go to the scriptures. But I said, dude, we should look, you should look it up. And he says, no, no, that's your gift. That's, you're the one that could dig that up. So I'm like, ah, okay, I'll dig it up. So five minutes and boom, what pale horse means, I had no idea. It, it seemed, it, it was there the whole time of just a little bit of digging. But I don't know why, for some reason, we don't go look at what the colors mean. Just go look at the colors, guys. Watch this. This one's going to blow your mind. Light. White. What do you mean, Al? How's that going to blow my mind? <laughs> Get ready. Luke. For crying out loud. Light. White. In Greek, which it is written in Greek originally. The name is... Luke, do you get that? <coughs> Excuse me, I know my throat's already gone, but Luke, white means Luke. Who is the church of Philadelphia? Who is the bride? Who does Luke K 
keep talking to? He is talking to the bride, the group, his group that is going to escape all of these things. And what? Stand before the Son of Man. Little flock, do not fear, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is the heavenly kingdom. All right? The first group, he's at the wedding. When he comes back, it's at the second watch and then the third watch. It's all over. Luke is talking about this the whole time. Right? Where's that story? Oh, if she marries this one and she marries this one. And then he says, oh, this group, those who are accounted worthy, right? Those who are accounted worthy to obtain that world, which one? The heavenly realm. And the resurrection from the dead, right? Because there are going to be some alive and some dead that get to go in the in the in the uh, with the bride in the to the to the marriage, All right? They will neither marry nor be given in marriage anymore, like we are here on earth. That's what this was all about. And it says what? So they're going to be accounted worthy for that heavenly world. They'll neither marry or be given in marriage again. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal un to angels and are what? The children of God. Bow, no arrows, came to get the arrows. Where am I? I'm in Luke. I've been telling you guys this. I've been, this is what I've been teaching for the last three months since I've been getting these revelations. Luke is to the escaped. Please get this out to people. Get this out. Share this with everybody you know. Get these videos out. And I'm going to show, I talked about this yesterday, that I'm going to show you what black means. And when you see what, well, at least part of the meaning of black, we know there's also going to be actual famines. But I'm going to show you the other portion of what black means. And that's why I'm telling you guys, buy Bibles for people. Hide them. You know, burn, uh, get jump drives. Copy these videos and leave them around for people because I'm going to show you when we get into the pale horse why having the scriptures and, and understanding in these scriptures for those who are left behind is going to be vital for them to understand. It's going to be vital. The scriptures even tell them. The scriptures, by being the pale horse in there, tells them that what I am sharing with you guys and have been for the last couple months is going to be necessary during the time of the pale horse. Isn't that crazy? It's going to become necessary right away as soon as the Church of Philadelphia is gone. So it's, it's actually going to be before the pale horse. And this information is going to need to get out there. All right? And I'm going to touch on that. Why? So here we have the children of God who are where? They're accounted worthy and they're now in heaven. Children, arrows. So if that's the case, boom, the arrows have been collected. Where are we talking about all this? Luke. Just like I've been sharing for these past three months. Luke is the church and white means Luke. So of course, my brother in Christ, Mark, freaked out because he's he he was having issues so he's just we were in agreement and everything but he's just like man i for some reason i just don't see that right and of course we do have different paths but we share with each other and i love having them because it's great to have somebody to talk to uh who gets what we're talking about for each other even right and uh when i showed him this he was like what so that it was awesome so the white horse in revelation 6 the first horse is Luke. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, taking out the bride, delivering her to, uh, delivering her to paradise. I'm uh, sorry, to the third heaven. Bringing the bride to the sun. Right? I talked about that in the last video and I think maybe in the video before that. Jesus isn't going to get the bride. He's going to meet her somewhere up there. But he doesn't come down to get her. It's not that time. Right? And what does he do once he receives his bride? He takes her into the chamber, right? 
All right, let's watch this. Watch this, guys. Just I could I'm tying it together all throughout these scriptures, all over the place. Watch this. And when I say me, it's it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit. All right, it, He's just leading me, and my memory for some reason can it, it in three months went from zero to a hundred. Watch this. What happens when Isaac has his bride being brought to him by? The, the the head chief servant <coughs> of of Abraham who had to go out and find a bride and bring her back. Well, what happens? Right? So Isaac is gone out into the field to meditate. And by the way, when does he meditate? Even tide. This is gonna tie into tonight's or tomorrow's video. Even tide, right? At dusk. And what happens? He lifts up his eyes and saw camels coming. Rebecca lifted up her eyes. Guys, this is, this is huge information right here. Lifted up her eyes. Lifted up his eyes. When I was showing this yesterday, again, my brother Mark, when he, when he showed me something in John 4, and I realized what it was because we were understanding it the wrong way, and I said, well, I'm going to read through all of it. First thing I thought of, well, second thing I thought of was this, right here about lifting up the eyes. It's an, it's insane. But now watch this. Uh, so now Rebecca lifts up her eyes and she saw Isaac. She lifted off the camel, for she had said unto the servant, "Is this the man?" Right, and so on and so forth. So then she puts a veil over her face, and the servant told Isaac all things that had happened. Right, this is a great one. You guys should read all of Genesis twenty-four. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took her, right? Now, the, tr the wedding tradition is seven years, which means what? Jesus won't be seen for another seven years. See what I'm saying? Jesus isn't coming back for seven more years. So here we have the bride taken out in the white horse bringing the bride to the son and they're going to go where they're going to go what like, well the the wedding tradition is they go into the wedding chamber right the 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 parents wedding chamber and they stay in there for 7 days in this case 7 years and when he comes out he's strong he's invigor invigorated right and he's ready to fight well when is that 7 years later look at that after the sixth seal, they're aware that his wrath is now coming. And if there's wrath coming, that means the churches have to be gone. Because the churches, they're not appointed to wrath. <coughs> As we see in 1 Thessalonians and maybe 1 Corinthians, we know that they're not appointed to wrath. Right? So that means all these seals, none of them have been the wrath yet. Which means the churches are going through them, the ones that still have to repent. Right? So then when does Jesus show up? He shows up before the trumpets. Because the trumpets are his wrath. The trumpets are Jesus' wrath. It ties in exactly what I'm telling you here. When he comes out of his chamber, after being with his bride for seven days or seven years in this case, he's invigorated, he's feeling powerful, and he's ready to go out. Watch this. This one's for Sandy as well. He was talking about this yesterday. Watch this. You know, sometimes people don't have all the understanding and I'm able to catch it. Watch this. Uh, shoot. Please, please, please. Where was it? <coughs> oh, come on. Oh, was it, it was Psalms. Psalms 20. Oh, Psalms 19. All right, so here it is. This is talking about the Maseroth, right? So if you, if you uh, in the heavens or in the stars, the sun, the moon, the stars, nobody can change what they're telling us, right? They're telling a story to, doesn't matter what language you speak on earth. They're telling you the story of the Bible. They're telling you the, the beginning and the end and everything. It's all in there if you know how to read it, right? But then it says, look, uh, their line has gone out to the ends of the world. 
uh, to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle in the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race, meaning ready to run a race. Well, when you go, when a bridegroom is coming out of a chamber, he's not going into the chamber. He's coming out of the chamber. He's invigorated. He's rejoicing. and He's ready to now run a race. He's ready to fight. His bride is safe. He's had his time with his bride. Now he's going to come out and he's going to fight. He's ready. Right? That's what happens at the seals. When the seals are done, then Jesus is going to come and he's going, they're going to seal the 144,000. The rapture is going to take place. The rapture doesn't go to heaven, by the way, guys. Only the bride does. The, bride, the, the churches that are repentant, when Jesus comes and raptures them, they don't go to heaven. They go to, the par they go to paradise. We know paradise was here on earth. Somewhere kept secret on earth. right? Adam and Eve were kicked out. There was the uh, cherubim, and there was that shining sword, uh, flaming sword, I believe it was, and it's concealed. Well, this is where the people in the rapture go. They are going to be brought to some place secretive on earth. And you know what else that ties into? This right here. This woman in Revelation 6, you know, and she fled into the wilderness. See this caught up unto God and to his throne, right? And then the woman fled into the wilderness. This is all here, guys. It's all here. Watch this. So let's go back into six. So we see the bride is gone. I'm going to do a little bit more digging in that Revelation 12 because there's some new understanding that's been revealed. But that talks about, because you got to remember, there's two going into the wilderness. One flees, one flies. Whenever there's slight word changes, it's not a mystery. It's because it's speaking to two different people or two different groups is who it's addressing, all right? Always remember that. And then you could seek out a thing, as the Lord says, right? And you'll be a king or be considered a queen for it by God himself, all right? So we've identified the awesomeness of what white means, which is Luke, all right? Now, how about the red one, right? How about the red horse? Watch this. <coughs> Fire-like. So it's not fire, but it's flame-colored. It's fire-like. Okay, let's go G4442. This is why eSword, this program, is so awesome. It takes up almost no space, and it's easy to use. Specifically, lightning specifically lightning <coughs> excuse me we know that verse which is in luke that says and i beheld satan coming down as lightning right well guess what there's a big hint here it's not this this red horse isn't satan himself satan won't come until he has his throne his throne won't come for another 10 years when they've rebuilt the temple. Then he's going to stand in it. He's going to, they're going to realize, oh my goodness. But he's not coming for about 10 years yet. All right? From the beginning, once this takes place. There's 10 years. All right? But we discover that red, okay, it's like fire, but it's not. But it's specifically more as lightning. And I beheld Satan come as lightning. Why? Because through the lightning, he's going, he's bringing his power unto whoever he's taken possession of. He's, he's, he's going to be brought in that his spirit is going to go into that person of the Antichrist here. Now, who is that? A lot of people think Obama, right? I, I, I wouldn't say no either from things I've seen and things that I've studied. There's a couple people, maybe two or three that qualify, but dang, Obama fits the bill better than any other. Now, how do how, what else can we prove, can we show to prove that this means the Antichrist? 
think of Solomon's, I mean, think of uh, Samson's uh, story, right? You remove the pillar, destruction comes. See that? Remove the pillar, destruction comes. Look at this. The red one, take uh, powers given to him that he should, that everybody should kill one another. Boom. Remove the pillars, destruction comes. It's going to come almost simultaneously. I believe like many that now most people, uh, the vast majority of people, you know, even if they believe that we go and the bombs drop, I believe that too. Unfortunately, what people need to understand is it's not the rapture of everybody. It's not even the rapture. It's the escape, right? And now having said that in escape, we talked about it before, you know, it's the Enoch type. Enoch was translated in Hebrews 11 t tells us, right? So Enoch gets translated, but we don't really have much detail on what translated means. So, you know, Paul tells us in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12 that it's like a rapture, but he didn't really know how else to explain it, right? And then you have Philip, who is raptured, right? He's caught away and he's brought to a new area on the earth, right? We see it in the next verse. That's your rapture. And then you have the fleeing to the wilderness, which was Joseph and Mary with Jesus. That fleeing is, is the one that the Jews are going to do at the 10-year mark. When Satan stands there and defiles the temple, and they're going to realize, oh, crap, right? And off they go again. But what more evidence do we have here in the red horse that it's the Antichrist? And the answer is right here. Can you believe that? It's freaking right here. Sorry. It's been here. It, look, look at this. And power was given to him. Uh, who has power given to him by somebody? Hello? Revelation 13. And I saw the beast rising out of the sea. This is the Antichrist. Right? And the dragon gave him his power. You get that? And the dragon gave him his power. It's all over the place, right? And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. What's the beast's role? Right? What's the beast's role? Taking peace from the earth. Well, he can't take peace from the earth. How is peace taken from the earth? Luke is gone. The pillars are gone. You get that? White, Luke, the pillars are gone. The Holy Spirit has taken them out. Peace has been removed. And the Antichrist is given his power. And what comes from that? Peace taken from the earth that now people are going to start killing each other. All right. Look at that. Two seals down, two to go, and I won't be too long on these. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's crazy. All it took was a little bit of digging. And the thing that opened it up first was just digging into the words. And then when I saw this after the red, I was like, oh, my goodness. It doesn't get any more obvious than that. Now watch this. How about black? Right? It's a pair of balances. We know that it's famine. All right? We get that. I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with you guys that it's the famine. And see, wheat for this much, barley for this much, but hurt not the oil and the wine. Well, why not the oil and the wine? This is Judah. It's not their time yet to get all the beatings. They're going to get some stuff. Don't, don't get me wrong. But they're not taking all the beatings yet. This is the churches, the repentant churches, right? This is their time. This is, this is their time. They're going to prove themselves, right? Well, it's going to start back here, but... This is when they start proving themselves, right? There's going to be the killings and beheadings and many, 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 many millions of people are going to die, right? It's your wheat. Well, watch what black means. What? That's it. This took a little bit more digging. Black. That's it. Nothing to go on but the name and that it shows up three times. So we do a little digging now. And we find out, <coughs> excuse me, that, uh, sorry, I 
what does this one have elevation 13 okay uh we do a little bit of digging and the places where it talks about black it just means like sun black a sackcloth black it doesn't really give us anything so we do a little bit more digging and find out what it also means black ink it's in second corinthians and then second john and third john church judah or israel church judah Told you guys it's all the time. Watch this. So John 2, 1. Watch this. Listen even to how it words it, all right? Listen to this. Watch this. Ink. Right? Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink but I trust to come unto you and to speak face to face that your joy may be full. Why doesn't he want to write? Why doesn't he write here? Let's remember who he's talking to. He's talking to end time church is this scenario here, right? Israel. John 3 is Judah, right? Because what? He's not writing because, first of all, there are not going to be any more Bibles. These websites, these YouTube channels, which is why I keep telling you guys, copy them, copy them, copy them. They're going to be gone. But they're not going to be gone right away. So you're going to need to take this information and store it, learn it. You know, I pray actually that everybody who's listening and their, their loved ones will get to be part of the escape and not be part of the churches that get raptured. I mean, a worst case scenario, you want to be in the rapture church, right? But that means you're going to go through the seals. I would much rather you don't. I would much rather you're doing what you're supposed to, to be accounted worthy to escape and to be the bride and not part of Israel, the church, right? Why doesn't he use ink and paper? Because it won't be there anymore. There will be no more scriptures. Black. See these letters? Black. <coughs> They're always written in black. Black ink. The scriptures will be removed. Think of World War II and many other times. Right? World War II was a little snapshot. As crazy and big as it was, it's a small fragment of what it's going to look like in the end days. And Bibles were burnt. Imagine on a global scale. And then what does he say? I'm also not going to do it because I'm going to come and see you face to face. When does he come and see these people face to face? After the sixth seal, before the trumpets begin, the 144,000 are sealed like we see in Revelation 6 after the seals. And after they're sealed, we see what? The rapture of the repentant churches right there isn't this crazy that is your black now you say well okay it means black ink and there's gonna be no bibles or no way to learn or understand the bible except for people like us who were thinking about these people that were going to be left and putting these pieces of information these bibles these usb sticks all over the place that people would find them and that people could learn and come to understand and it's going to lead us right into the pale horse now you say well how does that relate to famine <laughs> don't forget the word is what jesus says oh shoot i was just reading it yesterday i didn't even think of it uh, working with this but it absolutely does jesus they say to jesus well who's brought him food we just got here did anybody give him food because he said he, he's okay and he's like no 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 my meat is for me to finish my job that the Lord sent me to do, right? What do we know? What do we call the, the scriptures? The bread of life, right? Our daily bread. It is our food. So one of the, one of the understandings of famines, which is why the name for black horse isn't a famine as in not having enough food, although it will be that, but it already tells us that. So it's not a mystery. 
But what's the name? What's the purpose for black? It is black ink. There is going to be no more scriptures, no more food from the word, no more bread of life from the word. See that? And so you're going to have famine from the word of God. That is the understanding of the black horse. Get it? Now watch this. <coughs> Excuse me. For me, this is when we were having this conversation with my, myself and uh, Mark. This was the thing. He says, well, go look up Pale Horse. You know, you go do your digging into it. This one was the most interesting. I mean, I shouldn't say most interesting, but a big, whoa. I had no idea, right? Pale, we just think for some reason they're just pale and there's an understanding to it. It just means like death and, well, it does. Of course, we know that, right? So that's why. Well, then why wasn't, if it just meant that, why wasn't the red horse pale, right? He's killing too, right? And famine, why wasn't he pale, right? People are just shriveling away from famine, right? Why is this one pale? Who's dying here? A fourth part of the earth, right? Does this really mean two billion people? Possibly, or almost two billion? Possibly. Could it be a specific church or groups of churches? I would say most likely. Now watch this. You want evidence of it? This is your beheadings, guys. Bibles are taken away. Pillars were removed. Foundations were broken down because the pillars have been removed. Killing and peace is now gone and everybody's killing each other, and the Antichrist is given his seat and power, but not to continue the 42 months yet, he's given his seat and his power, all right? Very early on, very, very early on. Then there's famine. There's going to be the word of God removed, right? Don't forget all these wars taking place here. Then we come down to the pale horse. After the scriptures have now been taken away, in any way they could take it away. What's all this killing here? Right? They're given over and power was given unto them over a fourth part. <coughs> Again, who's given them this power? Power over who? Over the saints. You want evidence that that's who it's talking to? Check this word pale. Greenish. Right? Veldent. That's the like a French way. Green, pale. Well, let's go a little bit further. Let's dig into this. 55, 14. See, another thing you could find too is when you have a word here, you can go one more this way or one more this way and see if they relate, right? Because sometimes they don't have a where it comes from or meaning same as, right? But in this case, it does. So let's see what 55, 14 is. It means the name Chloe. Are you kidding me? Chloe? What the heck is Chloe? I've never heard of Chloe in the Bible. Well, Chloe means green. She is a Christian, and it stands as a female. All right? Christian, female, green, pale green, Chloe. Let's look into this. How about the name Chloe? What on earth does Chloe mean? So we're going to see the baby name for Chloe. I did a search just to see if I can figure this out a little bit more. And hopefully it'll... Oh, there we go. Look at this. <laughs> I shouldn't be chuckling, but I can't help it when I see this stuff. The name Chloe means young green shoot. Anybody mind telling me where we see young green shoot? And it's what? From the Greek. From the Greek. Young green shoot. And she's a female. You guys ready? Young green shoot, female. Where do we know that? Luke is gone. 
The bride is gone. So who is all this happening to then? You know, people say, well, the church is gone. No, a church is gone. Not all of them. One church is gone, Philadelphia. The repentant churches that have to take a little bit of a beating to wake up. They're not gone yet. And who did I say they are? I said, that's who Mark represents. And Chloe means Christian female, young green shoot. So female, young green shoot, Christian. What did I tell you earlier about lesson of the fig tree, the parable of the fig tree? <laughs> Here, check this out. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves. What? What on earth did that mean before? Remember I told you her? I've been putting this on the back burner trying to figure this out for... Oh, probably for a little over a month now when I when I noticed it. I had it highlighted, but I didn't understand it, and the Lord led me to it. Her is in Mark only for the fig tree parable. And it says, when her branch is yet tender. Chloe means the young green shoot. Green. Blooming. When her branch is yet tender. Because what? It's letting them know when these things come to pass. No, your redemption, it's, it's nigh at hand. You're getting there. It's not happened yet, but just be patient when you see this happening. When who sees it happening? The churches. When the churches see all this beheading begin after the Bibles have been taken away and all these things have been removed and beheadings are beginning and they're killing them. They're given power over the Christians, over the saints. The pale horse, that means her green branch putting forth. Be patient because it's coming to an end. There's still more to come, but it's coming to an end. And who do we see here? The souls of them that have been beheaded for what they stood for. Now, who are these guys? These are the churches. I believe that this is Smyrna only. But we don't know who Smyrna is. There's throughout all the churches, just like there's bride in all the different churches of believers in Christ. Like I was telling you at the beginning. Same thing in here. I believe it's, it's possible that why it says a fourth part is because it's a fourth part of those churches that remain. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me, because you have to look at the churches that are still there, right? And those that have to repent compared to the ones that don't. So there could be something there, but I don't know enough on that yet to explain the fourth part. But we do have who it is now. The young female green branch blossoming female Christian churches that had to repent that Mark was speaking to the whole time. See this? The scriptures just revealing themselves to me like this through the Spirit. Watch this. I'm not done. Where else do we find this information? Well, let's go where Chloe is. Right? Where was that? Uh, Second Cor uh, 1 Corinthians 1. Remember I said earlier, and I've talked about it in other videos, first, first, first is talking to the church, not all the first all the way down here in the Easter, that's not it. But first, 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 I believe even in Peter as well. They're speaking to the church during the time of tribulations and how they should act and carry themselves. Different ones, how they should carry themselves and treat others, how they should eat and not eat, what they should be looking for. You know, people are going to come and go. It's all revealed in there in relation to end times. All right, during the times, during the end times, all right? And how second, second, second <coughs> is speaking to Judah and how they're to act and what they're to do and look for and wait for and so forth. All right? So where do we find Chloe? Where do we find Chloe in scriptures? Well, I, obviously, I had to do a word search. I had no idea either. 
Chloe is, look at this, Chloe. And now you want more evidence that he's talking to the church? Watch this. <laughs> this is crazy. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. This is what I'm teaching you guys. This is what I'm teaching. Is it for us now? Sure, some of this is for us now. But this is really being taught and given to me to put out there so that when the time comes, they will be able to have an understanding and be able to be pointed to where the truth is, the full truth, that they're here for seven years, not just three and a half in case they thought, well, I thought I should have been raptured. And I wasn't, so I've got three and a half more years, and the mid-tribbers were right. No, they were also wrong and partly right. It is in the middle, after the seals, because it's 14 years plus. All right? Seven years for the church Israel, seven years for Judah, then the wrath of God for the rest. That'll last, I believe, five, six months. All right? And this tells you that the Lord Jesus Christ that you would all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. What do we have now? How many thousands of denominations do we have now? Hello? How many thousands upon thousands of denominations that can't agree on everything? So I don't expect when they're hearing my stuff before tribulation has begun that they're going to believe it now anyways. Which is why I keep saying my information is for those that are left. Those churches that still needed to repent. And this is the evidence of it right here. Look at this. For it hath been declared unto me of you by my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, the, 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 the Christian female, the young sprouting green branch, pale horse executions, that there be contentions among you. Now this I say, or sorry, now this I say that every one of you say. So he's saying, I hear this is what all you guys are saying. Some of you are saying, I am of Paul. I got I know one guy that has a YouTube channel all about that. It's Paul 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 under grace. No, it's Jesus Christ. Paul is the one sharing it, all right? So I am of Paul. Another one says I am of Apollos. Another one, I am of Caiaphas. Another one, I am of Christ. The divided churches, the denominations of the churches. Chloe <coughs> excuse me pale horse right paul goes in to say is christ divided was paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of paul no christ is not divided paul was not crucified you're not baptized in the name of paul you're baptized in the name of christ christ is not divided and Christ was crucified. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And you're going to all need to figure that out before it's too late. That's why you're here during tribulation. You couldn't agree on anything for the most part. You're divided. And how were you supposed to be part of the escape? Part of the bride? When you couldn't even agree on anything. That is what's being shown here. Isn't that incredible, guys? God is good. He is awesome. The Spirit is working, guys. And the time is short when you see my next video. And it's going to relate to this as well. White, meaning Luke. And the timing of white, PSS could also relate to snow. And that's going to be in the next video. Guys, you've got your pillars of white, your pillars removed. P 
peace taken away so that the Antichrist can receive his power and the killing can begin. Bibles being removed and your famine for the truth begins. And then you will have literal famine as well. Unless you take a mark. Remember, there's all these other things that are going to fit into it. You know, the Ezekiel 38, 39 war. These wars, all these things are fitting somewhere within this stuff. And that's just so much of studying to do, to be able to do all these videos on it. I'm trying to let you guys know these things in, in the overall before fitting them all in. Because from the time that the church is, uh, when the, from the time that Philadelphia is taken away to the end of the seals is going to be seven years. All right? So your scriptures are taken away. There's famine for the truth and actual famine. Beheadings and killings of who? The churches. The churches that could not agree. Chloe. See that? Isn't that unbelievable? Isn't that insane? I've just revealed to you guys with 100% truth the four horsemen. I revealed to you from my dream the sixth seal, how the untimely figs, and what are they called? Her. Get it? Do you get it now? Are you understanding more? Mark's fig tree right, which is to the church, is her. And they're to hold on a little bit longer <coughs> till these things come to pass and know that it is nigh at hand, even at the door. Do you get that? Her fig tree, when she puts forth, know that summer is near and then it's nigh at hand. What happens after the sixth seal? When the sixth seal is the great earthquake and then the fig trees fall, which ones? Hers fall. Soon after that, what happens? The wrath of the lamb is on his way. He seals the 144 from those about to be raptured. There is your rapture. Just the same way as Mark said it. Isn't that unbelievable? I don't know about you guys, but God is so awesome. The time is so short. If I haven't given you enough evidence to say repent now, turn away from those things you know you shouldn't be doing. Ask God for forgiveness. Ask Jesus Christ for forgiveness. Come to him if you haven't. And smarten up in those churches because the time is at hand. And for many of you listening to this that either got these jump drives or that had people refer it to you and give you the information. Time to wake up. Because these times, like I said, some of you are listening to this and you're in those times. Understand what is being taught here. The truth and how much time you have left still. Guys, be prepared. And for those who say, don't store up, you know, buying food and water. Oh, all those people are a joke. It is not a joke. Only one church is going. Everybody else is going to need food and water. You're going to need it. Or you're going to be taken to camps because you're going to be starving. <coughs> so if you have the ability, do it. Even if it's just a little bit for yourself, getting 50 cent cans at the dollar store or whatever. Do it. Get some dollar store water. Store some from your own taps. It's worth it. And if it's not for you because you are beautifully counted worthy, then great. It will be for others that we're trying to help as well. All right, guys. I love you. God bless. I know it was a pretty long video, but dang, it was worth it. All right, guys. I love you. God bless. Share it. Share it. Share it. Get this out to your pastors. Get a USB stick. Copy this and send it to them. Right? It's incredible, incredible teachings here coming not from me, only through me from the Holy Spirit. All right?
Time is short. And when you see my next video, you're going to get it. All right. God bless you. I love you.